Koichi Bukata, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency astronaut, very experienced astronaut, but for him, as well as for Man on her uh, first space flight, uh, this will be the first spacewalk for both of them. It's the 258th spacewalk in support of Space Station Assembly Maintenance and upgrades the fifth for Expedition 68. And we are kicking off the new year, 2023, with this as the first uh, spacewalk. Wakata, of course, is the fifth uh, Japanese astronaut to conduct a spacewalk. On the far right, you see Frank Rubio and Josh Cassida as the uh, suit IVs, the spacewalking support from inside the crew lock. We've been seeing them quite a bit uh, from inside the International Space Station. But here on the ground, there are a lot of support personnel, but uh, calling out namely Chloe Maring as the flight director, leading all of the teams here in Mission Control Houston. Keith Johnson knows the spacewalking procedures most intimately here in the room and works with support teams here in uh, Mission Control Houston and other rooms. And it'll be Zena Cardman. Uh, who is a NASA astronaut, as well as today's uh, ground IV, or the spacewalk communicator. Thermal cover is open. Wakata now exiting the hatch. Is uh, Wakata and Man, or, or call sign Duke, working together to get this very long bag out of the uh, crew lock. This is really, of all the tools they're going to be bringing out to the work site, this is the star of the show. That bag uh, contains the uh, modification kit flattened uh, with all of the pieces necessary uh, for them to uh, construct it. Um, right now, this is a picture from a previous strut uh, with an open bag. You can see all of the different components. Today, we'll be working on taking this and turning it into the fully constructed modification kit on the 1A channel. This is a very important piece of equipment that's going to be making its way with the astronauts. They're going to attach it to themselves. Ready for a check when you are okay, so uh, could you move up your camera a little bit up so that I can see the beard? Anywhere to see your tab up. Yeah. I can see that up. And I see a uh, HECA green LED on, WBSB and LED on. And I see both safer handles. Let me check the left side is down. Wonderful views from the outside of the International Space Station. Right now, the duo are just at the beginning of their planned six and a half hour spacewalk. They're getting a sunrise over the South Pacific Ocean. And we're getting uh, great high definition views from their helmet cameras right now. Uh, they just finished performing buddy checks, and you heard the ground IV Zena Cartman uh, telling them to take their time. Both of them now translating or moving out to their respective work sites. Now we're getting high definition views. This is Nicole Mann, call sign Duke. She's wearing the suit with no stripes, and she's got that giant bag with her. That's the strut bag that has the mounting platform uh, that they're going to be installing today. Both of them will be uh, working on the 1A channel. Koichi Wakata's got to make a stop first to work on the 1B, um, but Nicole Mann's going to get uh, get started right away, so she's got that bag in tow. Okay, copy that. I'm at the location of the cable bag. Okay, Koichi, thanks for hanging for a sec. We'll have you stow that cable bag, again with the handrail toward the radiator, using okay. 2219 and 2215. With that, you can fair lead on S4 handrail 2219. But I got uh, 2236 and 2251 for the bag, and I'm gonna get one more. Copy, Duke. Okay, Koichi, you'll be uh, driving M29 and M30 to torque. We're expecting about four to six turns. Looking for a turn count. Turn count on that one, but while we're doing that, you can go to the other bolts. So again, the pistol grip tool, that cordless power drill that Koichi Wakata is holding now. Visually another a little over one turn. I got a green light getting torqued out in the value 25.5. Yeah, you see her installing the uh, articulating portable foot restraint. Um, this foot restraint has the ability to um, have some settings to angle the foot restraint so that uh, it can reach predetermined 
marks uh, that are needed for um, the upcoming work to actually install some of the struts. So she's uh, installing that right now. Got the black line pointed towards unlock. Then Papa Papa. Now we have uh, both helmet camera views from Koichi Bakata and Nicole Mann. Hands on the whip extender and then we are pushing up on it. I don't know if you have any ideas. Uh, while you think about that, I'll move on to the um, whip exit extender. Copy, Duke. That sounds like a good plan. Okay, Dina. And that extension the lower five. Vault, uh... Duke, if you feel like that APFR is behaving, you can feel free to continue work on it, but we can also have you pause and head to the upper triangle and wait for Koichi to get over there. Okay, so I've got it in Tango Tango. I'm just trying to get that knob locked. It's about halfway there. Tango Tango, Fox 12, those are good settings, but the pitch knob is still uh, not back out. Um, and I like the plan to start working on the triangle. We'll come back with the tool. Koichi, we're taking a look there. It's a little bit dark in your camera view. We'll trust your... Uh, visual report as well. And we see a flap of MLI open on the telescoping end of the strut. If you see that as well, we'll have you go over and see if you can get that to close with the Velcro. Okay, uh, Zina, I don't know if you can see my head of you, but uh, I uh, use this integrated wire tie to secure this uh, uh, little bit uh, open MLI. Does that look good to you? That looks beautiful, Koichi. We really like that. With that, we can have you depart this work site, and you'll be translating over to 1 Alpha. So over on the 1A channel, uh, Duke is building the mounting bracket. You can see from this um, graphic right here what that's going to look like. So that upper part with the sort of pinkish purple part is the upper triangle. She's right now building that first. Uh, so she's getting a head start on there, and it's going to attach to what's called the mass canister. That's that greenish, bluish um, soda can looking structure. Uh, that's where the legacy solar arrays were originally deployed from, and this is really a, sort of an adapter to allow the uh, IROSA solar arrays to attach to the mounting bracket. That's that uh, sort of bluish indigo part labeled there on the left, the IROSA mounting bracket. So she's just right now building that, that upper structure. You'll be at the S5, S6 interface following the A-frame nader. I've got upper right on the center triangle. I'm going to work on the center pad now. Okay, copy. Um, but if you want, that pitch knob was giving me a hard time. Pitch knob, okay. You want to give it a try okay. or uh, try the tool? All the settings are correct. Okay, I'll try that. It's just... That oh, sounds tangle, like... Tangle to pop up, pop up, right? No, no, the pitch, pitch is already set, so it just needs to be locked. It's locked, okay, copy. Yeah, good coordination for both of you. Koichi, if you do want to grab the crowfoot tool, that's D-ring hotel in the strut bag, you'll need the ratchet wrench as well. Um, also, Duke, if it would help you to have an extra pair of hands, you can work together on the upper triangle, and then we'll go back to the APFR. Koichi Wakata uh, did tighten some of the bolts on the struts on the 1B side. He's going to go over and help Nicole Mann uh, just for a little bit. They're going to split up the tasks on the 1A side. Nicole Mann, uh, call sign Duke, is going to be continue to work on that upper triangle, uh, which is the top section of the full mounting platform that's going to be installed on the 1A mast canister as part of today's spacewalk. In the meantime, Koichi Bukata over on the 1A work site. They're over there together now. Uh, Koichi will work on the, uh, continue to work on that foot restraint, which uh, Nicole Mann will enter later as part of accessing those different parts of the mounting platform. So the two of them are over on the work, 1A work site now. Copy, additional three, that's four turns total. Thank you. on M17. PGT settings are Bravo 1, clockwise 2. Bravo 1, clockwise 2. Thank you for I'm going to close. Affirm, 
Um, you'll be going to torque. We're expecting a little over six turns to nine turns. So that'll be about four or five to seven turns additional to the two that you got by hand. And checking as well for black line flush. The ditch knob is uh, locked on Tango Tango, and it's a top out in the can be depressed. All right, Kuisi is the man. Uh, it was really easy with the tool. <laughs> That's so. awesome. Way to go, Kuisi. All right. All right, Koichi, we'll have you stow that okay. input tool back in the strut bag, and then you can assist Duke with that upper tool. Okay, the tool is already stowed in the strut bag. I'm going to assist Duke. You are the man. Try it. The Duke is the man. <laughs> we love it. Put the one more and... Luigi Wakata able to uh, work with that uh, pesky um, APFR, the portable foot restraint. Now the settings on that portable foot restraint are complete, so he'll join Nicole Mann, call sign Duke, uh, to continue assembling that upper triangle of the uh, mounting platform that they're going to install on the 1A channel. You can work on the MOI and also working on the left upper strut. Okay, copy that. So, Duke, when you're ready, I can give you PGT settings and a couple steps to work on. Bravo 3, clockwise 2, I'm going to do four turns on one, torque on the next, and then torque on the back on the original. <laughs> yeah, you got it. And just check for black line flush on both of those once you torque them. The sun rising on the International Space Station as uh, Duke gets those um, pistol grip tool or yeah, the cordless so power drill yeah, settings. Start is actually really good, Kuichi. Oh, nice. Okay. put on here is super helpful. Oh, that's great. Them working together is making the build of that upper triangle of the mounting platform a little bit easier. They were able to build the handover. We are expecting Flu's communication, um, the just video and audio, very briefly soon. Yeah, I got 19 additional turns on M16, green light, 18.3 on the torque, and both bolts of black line flush. Okay, 19 additional turns, green light, 18.3, and both are black line flush. If I hand you this PGT, there's two bolts right in front of you. Okay. Copy that. 13 or 14, those are next. Okay. Two turns hand start, followed by 19 turns with the PGT. I think that strap is Thank right you. over the button. You got it? Yeah, I got it. Okay, one, two. Can you push that? I'll just hold it on my way. Okay. Hey, just kidding, Duke. We're actually happy with that bolt. <laughs> Great news. So you can release the red from the left upper strut. It's, it's fine, but the, could you uh, tilt towards me? Yeah, that's yeah. good. Does it say in 13, 14 on the side? Does it say? It says on the side. Okay, I see that, okay. From this view of uh, Duke's helmet camera, we can very clearly see the full build of the upper triangle. Uh, they've put uh, two of the three sections of the triangle together. Now, uh, the two of them working together to install the final part of that with Nicole Mann, Duke, uh, able to hold the one side of the strut. Um, Koichi Wakata has great access to that uh, final part of the upper strut. That's the right side of the uh, upper triangle. Right now our limiting consumable is going to be EV1 Medox, right now looking at about 640, 645 PET. We're just about 20 minutes down on the timeline right now. You guys are doing good work. Okay. Is to build that right strut. And a correction that the triangle is actually uh, tethered uh, not to um, Duke. Okay. So this is a great shot of some of the work that's being done concurrently. You can see uh, 
EV2 Duke with the suit with no stripes uh, is ingressing or entering the portable foot restraint that was set up for her to access uh, some of the parts that are needed to install that upper triangle, which Koichi Wakata has in tow. Um, he went over to that cable bag that he stowed early on as he made his way out to the work site grabbing some of the cables. So he'll have the upper triangle and the cables in tow. Uh, and once uh, Nicole Mann or Duke is uh, inside the uh, portable foot restraint and in a good configuration, they'll do a handoff. Uh, so he'll be uh, handing off some of the components that she needs to, con to construct the mounting platform one at a time. Uh, and they'll work together to install this mounting platform. Koichi, can you uh, see my toes here? What's that? Can you uh, give me a look at my toes? I can see, yeah, okay. Yeah, it looks like the both sides are in, but the uh, heel, may, I cannot see the heel. Let me go there. Okay. Okay. I don't think my heel is in. I just want to make sure my toes are in right. Yeah, both are, yeah, left side is in, and the right side is, uh, yeah, you're in the, in the loop. Okay. You need to put the heel down a little more. Yeah, a little more down on the heel on the right side. I feel like my right's not in the toe loop, is it? Not, 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 not in. P push it in, right, further, towards your, yeah, further in, keep going. Yeah, you're touching the loop. You can put your, uh, down both right. Yeah. Let me just get reset back up here. Yeah. Koichi uh, Wakata has a great view. Um, he's aiding um, Nicole Mann and guiding her. He's got a better view of where her feet will go inside the portable foot restraint. Uh, behind them, you can see uh, the earth, the high-definition views from the HECA camera are providing these beautiful views of the southern Atlantic Ocean. Uh, they just passed over the eastern border of South America and are heading on a northeastern track towards Africa, but they're over the South uh, Atlantic Ocean right now. And a correction that that upper triangle is a, specifically attached to the um, to the strut bag, uh, it, to the bag where those uh, the upper triangle components actually came from. Um, but it will be Koichi Wakata that will grab it and hand it off to um, Nicole Mann once she's in position. You can get a great view. They, um, the cameras here from the outside of the International Space Station are zoomed in on the portable foot restraint. On the right, Koichi Wakata guiding uh, Duke through the process of getting ingressed or okay, fully yeah, um, integrated okay. into that portable right foot restraint. Yeah, Koichi, So right now, uh, Koichi Wakata, you see in the suit with red stripes, he just handed off the uh, upper triangle to... Duke, if it's easier, you can lean back to do that rolling motion, or you can also have Koichi take control back. Yeah, so Duke has control of that upper triangle. Koichi just guiding her as she needs to rotate it into position that's appropriate for installing it on the mast canister. Uh, 
nice work, Duke, if you need to lean back at all to get enough clearance for that maneuver. I know you're working in a tight workspace there. All right. Whew, got it. Awesome, Duke. Great job. Oh, there we go. Okay, clock is good. Copy. Great work. I'll have PGT settings for you next. Let me know when you're ready. Okay, Dean, I'll tell you that is complete. 716, 6-inch swabble is on my red PGT. Good pull test. Copy. Installed with a good pull test on your PGT. And Koichi, for you, we do think you have time. Totally up to you, no pressure. You'd be, per the plan, installing that MUT end effector on handrail 2214. That's the inboard edge middle handrail. With that, the uh, upper triangle uh, has been installed onto the 1A mast canister. This is for me. I think I'm um, popping out and adjusting the uh, APFR. Big picture. I think I'm going to need to pop yes. out to get to uh, RET on the mounting bracket. Okay, copy. Yeah, that's what we're waiting on is just that uh, mounting bracket RET. Uh, everything looks good, so we'll hear those checks periodically. That RET as a retractable tether, that's the one that was anchoring the um, upper triangle to the strut bag, so uh, Duke has to release that, and then they can move on to the next task. She's going to be um, exiting the foot restraint here shortly. All right, so Duke is egressing the APFR, and then we'll have you work together on the APFR and with X reconfig. Copy that. Yeah, ABFR is so happy that I got ingress. It does not want to let me go. Okay. We copy that, Duke. And Koichi, once you get over there, you can uh, help her if that is useful. Okay. It looks like you need to copy. just rotate your heels a little further in. I know that's tricky with just an ingress aid. Coming up uh, to the APFR now, Duke. Okay, thank you. Sure. I see the tether coming from the. Yeah, there's right there on the morning. On the. Right, I see that. Okay. I just smoke over here. So I'm gonna go my right heel in. If you'll maybe give it a kick. Okay. Uh, So right now, Koichi Wakata is helping uh, Nicole Mann, call sign Duke, to egress or get out of the foot restraint. Um, that foot restraint was configured such that it gave her just the right angle to um, install that upper triangle. It was the right angle for her to use that cordless power drill, the PGT pistol grip tool, and then drive those bolts. Uh, she needs to get out. They're going to reconfigure it, uh, angle it a different way, so now, and then she'll get back in it. Uh, so she'll be able to access the next set of bolts uh, for when they install that next component of the mounting platform, which is the right strut. Uh, so they'll work through that methodically, getting her out, re-angling it back in, and then they'll get the new uh, component component of the mounting bracket from the strut bag, uh, hand it off, and then yeah. bolt that uh, to the mass canister. Okay, now you can no, pull out straight. Yeah, Thank that's you. good. Okay. All right. I'm going to get this red off. Can we see that to the mounting bracket? do good pull test on the two inch and Kuichi, you will need to push that uh, pitch knob in before you'll be able to ratchet. You can try using the boot plate to get a little bit more of a lever arm there.
Yeah, that's what we expect. We know this is a really sticky pitch APFR. Yeah, it doesn't move. Complete unlocked position. I don't know if you can see it on the paper. Yeah, we see that. Stand by. We'll uh, talk about move. some possible suggestions for you guys. for leverage, and just a reminder to avoid using the glove for a pounding motion like that. if that helps get some more leverage. minutes and an hour down on the timeline, just thanks to that sticky pitch on the APFR. 
Um, so right now we are thinking that the get ahead, the S6 DDCU jumper, and one Bravo cable routing are going to be saved for a future EVA, but we're still in good shape. Just keep doing what you're doing. You guys are doing great work. Copy that. So right now, right now, Koichi Wakata and uh, Nicole Mann working at the two ends of the lower strut. This uh, attaches the top of the mounting bracket, which is part of that upper triangle that they built earlier. And the strut uh, anchors it to the lower part of the mast canister, and this is on the right side. So Koichi Wakata, because he's not in the foot restraint, will have access to that bottom part, and he'll use his pistol grip tool to anchor it to the bottom part of the mast canister, uh, while uh, Nicole Mann, Duke, um, with, who is still in the uh, portable foot restraint, has access uh, to the top portion of this lower strut, which is being attached to the front end of that mounting bracket. Here's a good shot uh, of the two astronauts working on both ends of that lower right strut. So you see Nicole Mann is in the foot restraint. She's got access to the top part of the lower strut that's towards the uh, upper triangle. Uh, she's got a pistol grip tool to uh, secure that to the top portion and then um, Koichi Wakata at the bottom portion securing the lower strut to the base of the mast canister. So from this uh, Helmet camera view. We're looking from the vantage point of Duke or uh, NASA astronaut Nicole Mann. You can see Koichi Wakata working on the base of the lower strut. Nicole Mann working on the on the cables. Of course, the strut is really a support structure that allows the uh, IROSA, the International Space Station Rollout Solar Array, to be installed. But it does need to provide power ultimately to the International Space Station. So these cables uh, will be uh, positioned accordingly, uh, so that when the IROSA is installed on the mounting bracket, that uh, they'll be able to basically hook it up to the International Space Station and the power that will be drawn from the new solar arrays uh, can be sent to all of the appropriate downstream places uh, uh, on the International Space Station. So they're positioning those cables now so when they later uh, install the IROSAs right now we're looking at uh, this summer to get the IROSAs up to the space station and installed uh, that they'll be able to hook it up. 15 turns with this torque wrench until you break over two times. Once you have that pit pin installed, you can go back and drive M20 to torque. We're expecting five to seven additional turns looking for black line flush. Can I not work at any MLI right now or not until the mid -trip done? Once you stow your PGT, you can release the ret from the lower strut, and then with that grounding pit pin installed, okay. you can install the MLI over the lower strut clevis. And after that, you'll be working on the right mid strut. Yep, once the is in a good position to receive, Duke, you will pass that mid strut with the side pad toward Koichi. Two turns on M9. Copy two on M9. This is the helmet camera view of Koichi Wakata. He's on the mass canister. From the mini workstation. So let me reconfigure that. Can you see that? Again. Uh, Duke, can you now another uh, handover of some of the video we're receiving from orbit. Uh, I don't see, I really don't see the interface. So. Yeah, not the interface. Just hold it in front of you and, and have it lined up like in the correct orientation. Like where you're from. So I simply do not see any interface. Can you pull it in front of you? Or I guess maybe not because of the tether. Right. Okay. So it needs to rotate. Towards you, you needs to rotate down 90 degrees. Hey guys, our recommendation, Koichi, if you have a decent reach to put two additional turns on the rest of those bolts, M10, 11, and 12, without your BRT, go ahead and do that, and then we can have Duke put two turns on her end and come help you with the BRT. Just continue with the two turns, and now uh, after that we'll get to look for the uh, BIT. Two turns on M11. So once again, the two astronauts working in tandem. And big picture, Duke on the boy, left side. You see her uh, driving the bolts to towards the bracket, and then back together. So we want to just run the procedure, and then we'll have Koichi come to Duke in order to work together for his BRT. M11, five and a half turns complete. 
Five and a half additional, green light, 3.6 on M11. Okay, on M12. Okay, uh, say again, Zina. Uh, Luigi, you can stow your PGT um, and next release the RET, Duke's RET from the mid strut. Okay, copy that. PGT stowed. Okay, I'm going to release this on Duke. Okay, I'm ready. All right, here you go. Okay, I got it. So with that, that uh, completes driving the bolts on the mid strut on the right side. Now the two will work to um, make sure the multi-layer insulation, that white cover, is secured. Um, Duke has the go-ahead to get out of the foot restraint and start working on re-angling it so they can work on the left side. They're going to do the same thing, so they're going to start with the lower strut. Um, that goes to the base of the mass canister and then complete the mid strut. They'll just do the same thing really on the opposite side of the mass canister, but they're just wrapping up the work on the mid strut as we speak. With that, we'll take a glove half and gauntlet check from you. So we can continue with the Exactly, that's right. So next steps will be getting the left mid strut from straps 9 and 10. We're getting a great view from the 
high-definition helmet camera of Koichi Wakata, who's guiding uh, his spacewalking crewmate, Nicole Mann, call sign Duke, through the ingress process of the APFR, the um, portable foot restraint. And so we're seeing up close how the heels actually ingress into the uh, portable foot restraint for to, to lock uh, the astronaut into place uh, so that they can access the work site. Heel down for the heel down. A little more heel down. Okay, now you're in. Okay, right. that's good. You're in. Awesome. Thank you, Koichi. Awesome. Great. Awesome teamwork, guys. Looking really good. And it's still red at here, so. Okay, stand by. Okay. There's that handoff. We're really just repeating the process that we saw on the uh, other side. On the right side, we're repeating the same process on the left. So lower strut first um, and secure it with bolts to the mounting bracket that you see from the view of Duke's helmet camera. And then from Koichi's, he'll, he'll install the lower bracket on the base of the mass canister. So that'll be the first steps. Same thing we saw on the right side we're doing on the left. You can translate to the left side spherical bearing. Duke, I can give you PGT settings for when you are eventually driving the M22 bolt. Okay, go ahead. That'll be Bravo 1, clockwise 2. Bravo 1, clockwise 2. That's ex exactly right. So he'll start his. Okay. You'll be two turns. Wait for him to torque, and then you can torque. When you get there, we'll be looking for the left sob spherical bearing alignment. So, uh, Duke, uh, Nicole Mann okay, is at the... Two turns on M22. Copy two turns, and just to make sure, do you have the pit pin clear of the clevis? As a quick overview of installing these struts, um, with the astronauts at both ends of the strut, they alternate uh, driving the bolts. So, it was... Um, Koichi Wakata, who started with his pistol grip tool. Once he was done, it went back to Nicole Mann. Now it's back to Koichi Wakata, and then Nicole Mann will do it again. There's only one bolt, but they just address that same bolt two times while alternating. Um, part of the procedure is to just make to avoid anything like stripping or, or anything like that. So right now you see uh, Koichi Wakata using that torque wrench, and that's really just to make sure it's super secure. He's also going to do a pull test, just a quick tug, just to make sure there's no wiggle, and it's uh, truly installed. Um, and so they'll continue to alternate. Nicole Mann has one more um, uh, one more time has to address that bolt on the on the top side next to the mounting bracket, and then they'll wrap up uh, with the multi-layer insulation, making sure it looks good before getting to the left mid strut, and uh, that'll be the last component of the um, of installing the mounting bracket before they go around and uh, secure the MLI and address any last minute items, but that's the last component um, needed for installation.
Medvina, did you come up twice, break up? Guichi, you're coming in a little broken there. Will you say again the turn? Black line flush and the torque wrench broke over twice. We'll look for no gap between the strut boss and bearing and a good wiggle test. And I was unable to copy the total number of additional turns that you added. Right now, both of the uh, astronauts just pausing, uh, taking a moment to uh, relax as they wait for ground teams to assess their work with the bolts on this particular lower strut. Um, determining if it's the if it was appropriate for uh, and if the mounting bracket itself and the mounting platform really is in a uh, good configuration before they proceed on to the next steps. Okay, Koichi, we've talked it over. Um, I know you will love this. You get to use the torque wrench even more. What we're going to have you do is continue going until the torque wrench breaks over and then keep going. So this will add extra torque. See if you can get that bolt to move any further and just keep us posted. Koichi, ideally we're looking for one additional turn. Let us know if it starts to move at all. Duke, you will be able to start this M22, driving M22 to torque. That'll be an additional five to seven turns. You should have that PGT set to Bravo 1, clockwise 2 already. Looking for black line flush. Hey, Koichi, we're watching your camera view here. It looks like it's not moving if you apply more torque. Is that correct? I concur. Yeah, I concur. It uh, doesn't have any sign of moving. Didn't have a great view of that uh, boss and boss bearing, just to make sure. Um, if you can take another look at it, see if you can get eyes on. I know it's dark. Um, and make sure that we're looking at the boss to boss bearing clearance as opposed to the pad itself from structure. And also take a wiggle test. With this, uh, you know, helmet light, I really do not see the, um, um, the circle bearing side because the circle bearing is uh, dark or it's black and it's uh, really dark and it's, I cannot tell if it's a shadow or bearing. And uh, on the strut boss side to the uh, circle bearing, it looks like the gap is small or almost small, but with this lighting condition, I cannot confirm. Probably what you see is what I'm seeing. Okay, copy that, Koichi, and we'll have a quick handover coming up here in a couple seconds. If you can do a wiggle test just to see if the boss and boss bearing move together. The boss and the bearing seems to be working together. Copy, Koichi. Copy, Koichi. I see that in your heck of you. Um, big Picture will be probably trying to come back to this in better lighting conditions so we can get good eyes on. Uh, meanwhile, we'll work on that left mid strut. Nice work, guys. And Quichi, if you could just check that your safer handles are down as well. And then, Duke, you can extend the strut to Quichi. And hey, Koichi, looks like that side pad has uh, got a mind of its own and popped off there. Okay. Uh, okay, that's that. Okay, I'll uh, do it again. Okay, Duke, I'm going to go again. Right side first. Okay. Left side in. Like this is in a good hot spot. Koichi. Take two turns on M1. Two 
Jones on pin one. Copy, Kuichi, and stand by. We're seeing a little bit of movement in that side pad. If you could just kind of push on it or give it a little bit of a, a pull test. feature so if you start from the right side there's kind of a lip that you have to engage underneath the plate that you're driving the bolts right. into so see if you can get that hooked I first. Understand that. yeah and then press down on the left side okay I'll try that again Koichi, uh, one thing that might help is having Duke add some leverage on her end. And just to correct one thing that I said okay. earlier, there's not actually a sweet spot vertically in that alignment. The soft dock should work uh, okay. anywhere vertically on that physical structure. Okay, understood. So, so this time I will have uh, Duke push in, is that right? Yeah, have her push it in and towards you. Right, okay. Can I do that, Duke? That collapsed again, hold on. Let me go to a different angle. You have the right engage, let me know, and I'll move right okay. in. Okay, looks like it's, it's in a good spot. Could you push? It doesn't. I'm looking at, I don't know if you see this heck of a view, but it just doesn't go in. Looks like it's uh, vertically aligned to me. Yeah. It's uh, symmetrical on the upper side and lower side. Okay, copy all of I that, Luigi. Uh, We've got some troubleshooting okay. steps for you here. If you take it off, you'll want to look on the underside of that okay. side pad, and we're going to have you check that the okay. ball detents, there are two of them on the side pad, check that they can be depressed. You can use the hook on one of your uh, adjustables or a ret. Okay, let me check. Yeah, they can move. Can move. Copy that, Koichi. Stand by. It 
seems to me that the right side does not engage. What I mean? Okay, Koichi. So on the right side, you'll see there's kind of a tongue on the soft capture mechanism on the side pad. Yes, I see that. Yeah, so that tongue will have to yeah. fit into a gap on the right side. There shouldn't be much of a right. sweet spot, but just try uh, installing it partially and moving it up and down to see if it will slot into place. We'll have you guys try working on this for five or six more minutes, and then we'll formulate another plan. Okay. Koichi, I'm wondering if that MLI on the left side is in the way, left or the right side. Okay, so uh, you want me to remove the MLI and try that? Yeah, Koichi, if you're able to peel up that MLI a little bit, on the right side there's a gap. Exactly, yep. And we'll just get that out of the way fully. And also, the left side is also interfering. The MLI is interfering. Yeah, I concur with that based on what I've seen in your in your view. Stand by and we'll figure something out. Can I, okay, okay. Guichi, you can peel up the left side of the MLI as well and try to get that out of the way. I looks like it's glued on too. It is Velcro. Okay. Nice work, Guichi. Okay, then let me put this, let me try to engage this one. Duke, just checking in. How you doing over there? Good to go. Copy, thanks. Let's try that again. You know, unfortunately, you know, Joy. That looks like a good move that you just did. We'll give it one more try. If you can go up and down with that side yeah. pad. And then push in on the left side. If Duke can apply some force as well, give you a little extra could you, leverage. Could you push in force towards yeah. me? I know that telescoping feature is probably not helping you here. Okay, you can release the force. Okay. You, okay, could you do it again now? Okay. Push it. And hey, can we it just doesn't engage, also, Gina. There's the ring on the pit pin at the top, right by where your right hand was just then. See if you can flip that back and yeah, make sure that it, that's it, not in the way. Okay, now it can't came off. I'll put it back. Uh, this uh, ring is not interfering. Quickly, from this angle, it looks like I don't see the lip for the right side to engage on the back canister. Okay. Let me, let me put, put back the pit pin. Does the pit pin okay. out? Okay. Come over. All right. Thank you. Uh, for the closer. Okay. Okay, pit pin is back in. Okay, let me check that. Do you have a heck of you? Not 
quite a bit, uh, You're a little too side. far to your right. That side pad. How about now? Is How a about now? Can left. you see that? Negative, Koichi. We're probably going to have you pull off of this task, and we'll just put this strut back in the bag. Okay. Copy that. Do you have a good hacker on mine? Negative, Duke. What we're going to have you do is compress the mid strut and put it back on your BRT, and we're going to work a forward plan from here. We'll need to do some rearranging. Koichi, meanwhile, if you could take some pictures of that location, uh, just get the left side and the right side okay. and all angles that you're able to reach. Copy that. What were you trying to say? Did you say that... I'm just not seeing that, like, um, an area where that lip went into. It just looks different to me. On this side? There's a... There's a flange. There are two flanges on, on this side. I don't know if, uh, uh, you know, you, if you have a uh, huge uh, hacker camera, but uh, yeah, I can there are two flanges uh, pointing at... These flange is, is interfering with the uh, the side pad. Yeah, like it doesn't look deep enough to fit this lift. It looks different than the, the other side. Well, it just looks different than I think what uh, maybe what I said. Yeah, we copy everything. Quick hand over here. Um, there was a little bit of troubleshooting on that m left middle strut. It didn't seem to soft dock properly to that side pad on the mast canister uh, for them to get a really good secure uh, latch to it and allow them to drive the bolts. Um, so what the teams are deciding to do now is they're going to stow that middle left strut uh, and and uh, address the installation at a later date. In the meantime, um, Koichi Wakata is taking photos to allow the ground teams to assess and troubleshoot and come up with recommendations so they can address it the next time they're out there to install it. But it looks like uh, they'll be just leaving it in the configuration with the upper triangle, the right middle and right lower strut, and then the left lower strut. Uh, and then they'll just leave um, They'll leave the middle, uh, the left middle strut off for uh, this today's installation. Big picture here, we're going to wrap up. Uh, we need to get into some cleanup steps and get you guys back inside. So what we want you to do is, Duke, you'll compress that mid strut, put it on your BRT, get it back in the strut bag, that straps two and three. Koichi, you can close out those pictures and then we'll be having you help with cleanup as well. Okay, copy that. Okay. One other thing we'll want to think about is the right upper strut that still needs the MOI covering M13 and M14. So we'll work a forward plan for that. But if you guys have suggestions based on what you're seeing, let us know. Okay, what about, do you want 15 and 16 covered right now, even though we don't have the mid strut in? Koichi, we'll have you do the right upper MLI to cover M13 and M14. But it was like that, though. As you can see, this uh, brown color velcro was already exposed. So I think this is the initial condition. We copy, Koichi. You concur with that. You can head to the right upper strut, work on the MLI on M13 and M14. Yeah, Koichi, we need the whole strut to be covered with MLI. Working in tandem for cleaning up their work site, Man is working on um, putting that left metal strut back in the strut bag uh, and stowing it to be installed at a later date. Uh, and Wakata is over on the right strut side, uh, working on the multi-layer insulation and making sure that the insulation is covering some of the bolts that they were working on today. Luigi, once you get that ML and these are both uh, over M13 closeout M13. duties. <laughs> You'll also want to install two wire ties on the telescoping end. Okay, copy that. And just big picture awareness for you guys. Right now we're at five and a half hours PET. Our limiting consumable is still Medox, okay. but we've got a little over seven hours of PET time there. So we just want you guys to get everything in a good config to leave it. We'll be coming back out for this mod kit.
but we'll be in to clean up and then getting you guys back inside. Yeah, I'm thinking about putting the strut in the middle of the bag, like towards the end where it came out. Uh, I think that might be a little more, like, yeah. symmetrical would be better. Do you agree? I like that plan, Duke. And then, Duke, while you're there, actually, before we have you grabbing that uh, PGT and torque wrench from the APFR, we'll have you just bundle up that strut bag as low profile as possible, so kind of burrito it around that strut. Okay, so the PGT and the torque wrench, they were going to go back in the cable bag still? Yeah, they'll be going back in the cable bag eventually. Okay. Same with the GoPro and MUT end effector. Duke, for that strut, whatever works best for you, you really only need one of those straps. Add another one if it helps hold it in place for bundling ops, but it doesn't need to be pretty. Just bag it up. Okay. to the bag, you know. Copy, Duke. That sounds great. Dean, are you okay if I don't see this uh, Velcro through these little C rings? Hey, for I'm going to just stop to Velcro it down. Yeah, you're good okay. to leave oh, it as you have yeah. it. That's totally fine. Okay. And I think we're actually going to have you uh, okay. leave this strut bag as is and have you go work tool gathered for the cable bag. But stand by one, let me clarify. And Koichi, just trend yourself toward the mass canister so you're not translating on that mod kit. Copy that. Hey, Koichi, am I clear your safety center? You are. Okay. So a quick review, um, the two astronauts, Nicole Mann and Koichi Wakata, uh, out at the uh, outside of the International Space Station have installed several of the struts needed to construct the modification kit on the 1A channel. They were not able to successfully install the left middle strut, um, the side pad on the mast canister did not engage properly. So right now they're working on cleanup steps. They're stowing a lot of their tools and including the left middle strut uh, and making sure that the multi-layer insulation, that white fabric that surrounds the um, mounting platform is in a good configuration and is gonna maintain the integrity of the hardware. Uh, and once everything looks good, the two will translate or move back to the airlock. Tend it toward the lower strut there specifically the left side. We're not sure that it's... Okay. Yeah, so the, the other side from where you are now. Oh, my left side. Is that the uh, right lower shot you're talking about? Or the left lower shot? Yeah, sorry, Koichi. That's going to be the left lower, so actually not the area where you are now. You'll be translating to the other side. Okay.
Duke, first we'll have you grab the MUT end effector with the GoPro, stow that in the cable bag, and then, yes, you will be putting the cable bag on your BRT and getting ready to head in. Yeah, Koichi, I think if you can get a wire tie around that, just like you have your hand doing right now, and then take it up to the tether point on the mounting bracket itself. Tether point on the mounting is uh, here. You're talking about this? Afirm. Okay. And, uh, all right. I have a short wire tie in uh, my not. Why not uh, give me enough length to do that? Okay, Zina. Short wire tie does not give enough uh, length to get there to the tether point. Yeah. Copy that, Koichi. If you're able to just kind of feed it through the tether point, uh, and then the the wire tie doesn't necessarily have to loop back onto itself. You could have one twist up top on the tether point and then the other end going down to the cable bundle. I'm not sure that's enough length. Let me work an alternate plan for you just a sec. Yeah. yeah, probably not. Uh -oh. I'm going to put this on my BRT and head inboard if you agree. Duke, let's have you work on the strut bag, see if you can get that any more folded and ready to go for Koichi to eventually put that on his BRT, and then we'll have you head back in. Copy. Okay. Zena, can I try to uh, use my uh, short wire tie from this... Uh the point on the uh, mountain bracket. Hey, Firm. Koichi, I think if you take okay. off the wire tie that you just added a couple steps ago and then move the whole thing up I did higher. Not add a... Or, sorry, the, uh, the one oh, that was okay. already the existing wire tie, undo it from right. where you just added twists and then move the whole bundle okay. further up that lower strut as close to the mounting bracket as possible. Okay, let me try that. And see if you can get that wire tie to kind of hug the whole cable bundle to the strut. Okay. Is there, my cooling is at six. Copy six, Duke. Big picture, guys, we're just shy of six hours on PET here. Your limiting consumable still has a little over seven hours for Medox. So you're doing a good job. Keep it up with the cleanup, and we'll get you back inside. Right now, the astronauts are doing some cleanup duties during an orbital night time. The space station is flying 264 statue miles um, over Western Europe right now. Uh, they're just making sure their work site is in a good configuration so it can be addressed during a future spacewalk. So they're using wire ties to make sure the cables are secure. They're checking the multi-layer insulation, putting their tools away in their respective bags. Uh, just making sure the work site over at the 1A power channel is um, is in a good configuration to leave it so they can schedule a, a spacewalk at a later time um, to finish some of the work over here. Uh, they started on the construction of the um, 1A modification kit and was not able, they were not able to install that left middle strut 
They took some photos of the ground teams to kind of assess some of that work and uh, figure out what um, steps need to be put into place to make sure that they can have uh, a secure attachment of that left strut to the mass canister uh, and the whole fixture that will soon be holding up uh, future IROSA or International Space Station um, rollout solar arrays. Uh, those set to be delivered to the International Space Station this summer. Koichi, that looks great. We are really happy with that config. With that, you can leave that work site. You'll head back toward Duke and help finish up the strut bag. Eventually, you'll be putting the strut bag on your BRT. She'll lead the translation back in, I'll be that. and you'll follow back to the anchor hooks and then continue to ingress. This is your safety setting up. Yeah, this is my uh, safety setting that is going through your maybe workstation area with uh, We'll just have you stay put. Okay, I'm on the, uh... And Koichi, we appreciate the get ahead, but we will have you also uh, touch those brakes one more time as you head inboard, just to make sure that that's the last thing on the seat of cart that you touch. Understand. That strut bag has that final strut, the mid left strut that they're going to be bringing back into the airlock with them. So he's just standing by for now as uh, man gets the patch configured. Center, locked, block on block. Koichi, you can go ahead and head inboard. You'll pick up your anchor hook from handrail 3011, stow it on your mini workstation, and translate in. You will need to press the starboard seat of brakes and the port seat of brakes on your way in. Copy that. It works. Wakata making his way back to the airlock. This whole time he's been uh, in the suit with red stripes. He's got that strut bag in tow. Meanwhile, in the co man, call sign Duke, wearing the suit with no stripes. Luigi, sorry to bug you. Just to confirm, you did hit those feet of bricks I didn't have good eyes on. Very shortly, we'll be seeing Koichi Wakata, who'll be taking up the rear and exiting or entering the crew lock last. Okay, copy. We're tracking six for both of you. Ground copies everything. Koichi, let's just have you hang out there to give Duke maximum space for trying to get that SCU out from behind the hatch. Okay, Duke, if you are confident that you have enough slack to actually connect the SCU to your DCM and that it's not going to interfere with the hatch operation, we're good with that config. And Koichi, you can then continue to ingress the airlock and turn off your HECA as you ingress. Thermal cover. Nicole Mann is already in the crew lock, uh, just waiting for the next steps to hook up her umbilical um, to the International Space Station. Her suit's still on the portable life support system, but that umbilical will uh, provide um, water and oxygen and other power and other consumables um, to be transferred directly from station to the astronauts. So we'll just wait for Koichi Wakata to make his ingress successful, and then we'll begin the repressurization shortly after. And get the hook back to the magnetic plate D-ring and the strap cinched, and just verify that the magnet is engaged. Uh, that spacewalk again was 7 hours 21 minutes. It was the 258th spacewalk in support of space station assembly, maintenance, and upgrades. Uh, for the uh, two spacewalking astronauts, it was a first. It was the first space station spacewalk in 2023, but the fifth overall during this expedition, Expedition 68.
for Wakata. This was his first spacewalk, so he gets the total run time for today's spacewalk, which is, again, 7 hours, 21 minutes. It's the same for Man, 7 hours, 21 minutes for her career as well. Um, and that is the total run time for today's spacewalk, which ended at 2.35 p.m. Central Time. If you take all of the 258 spacewalks that have been conducted in support of Space Station Assembly Maintenance and Upgrades, you get a total of 68 days, 5 hours, and 47 minutes. Hey, Kiki, uh, will you guys take care? I'm sorry. Aki, will you guys uh, take care of uh, FET 4 and 1 decimal 240? And Frank, we are taking care of it. Cassida and Rubio as the suit IVs. They're the ones responsible for getting both of the astronauts uh, situated so they can start doffing or taking off their suits. So you can see the safe room uh, unit has been removed from the base of the backpack of Nicole Mann's spacesuit. get ready for a good night's rest, really, after a long day of spacewalking. The spacewalking time of 7 hours and 21 minutes is just really the official time of the spacewalk itself and used for engineers uh, for a variety of purposes, um, mainly in, in understanding con the consumable constraints and um, really uh, understanding the timeline as well. But uh, for the crew, it's a much, much longer day. They've been in the suit for quite some time doing pre-breathing and in-suit light exercises to get ready for the spacewalk. Inside those spacesuits is a 100% oxygen environment. So part of the pre-breathing exercise and, and really getting ready to go out of the hatch is purging their body of nitrogen, which, which takes uh, time. So they've been in the suit for quite some time.